Hey there, so today we have another review. This has been quite a while since I've had this one. This is New Holland's Dragon's Milk. So this is their uh, bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. Um, for most people, I think this might be one of the most accessible uh, imperial stouts, or barrel aged imperial stouts out there outside of like Bourbon County, which is a once a year kind of release. But once it's out, you can actually grab a good amount and then, you know, it's not really around for the rest of the year. So um, I bought this because it's buy one, get one at Publix. I have to check my receipt, but I think it was like $16 for a four-pack. It was actually not that cheap, but obviously buy one, get one, makes it $8 a four-pack, $2 a bottle for 11% burn barrel and real stout. Even if it's not the best, who knows, whatever. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've had this one, so let's dig into it. So the beer comes in a really nice kind of uh, dark brown to black color. Not completely black, like, let's see. I poured it out already. I didn't actually get to taste it, but yeah. So you definitely can see a good amount of light as you pour it. So it's not a completely opaquely dark black, black, black beer. Um, head comes in a really nice kind of medium tan color. I get some red fruit. Um, I get a good amount of this kind of like a dried date, kind of a goji berry, dried goji berry kind of thing going on. Hawthorne fruit as well. But it's obviously covered up with a good amount of this char, roast, um, big bourbon character, vanilla, coconut. Also, some of this acrid thing, it's, it's got this dryness to it, almost like, yeah, again, again, dried fruit, but also this kind of like dried espresso bean, chocolatey kind of thing, uh -huh. cocoa nib. Hmm, it's interesting notes. It, it doesn't immediately, I mean, it has notes of bourbon barrel and stout, but it doesn't immediately tell me like, okay, this is a familiar kind of that kind of like something about bourbon barrel, barrel aged imperial stouts has this melding character that makes it... The, between the roast and the barrel makes it a little bit desserty. Here it's got some stuff going on. It's like it's a good amount of fruitiness and some char roast and a little bit of that bourbon thing, but I don't know. It's, like, it's an interesting nose for a bourbon barrel for a stout. Cheers. Yeah, okay. So this is what I sort of like knew what I was getting into. It's very thin for 11%. That's weird as hell. Um, I solidly would have guessed this beer was like a barrel aged you know barrel aged whatever dark beer but like at like eight percent like the mouth feels really weird yeah it's a very thin beer for one percent that's so weird and then up front there's this big big vanilla flavor um i can't have, i can't imagine they're adding vanilla extract or anything in here but it has a very strong kind of like marshmallow fluff vanilla extract vanilla cake it's very vanilla-y, almost like too much in my mind. Um, I like when it integrates into the beer, but like it has this desserty vanilla thing, which is weird for just a standard barrel aged imperial stout. And it doesn't have mouthfeel to match match with it. Very thin, and then the roast is like a little bit burnt on the back end. But that mid palate is very empty, so it's like vanilla, thin, boozy. And then you get this like nice kind of like roasty bitterness. But the beer's also like not very sweet. Ugh, so weird. So like it's vanilla it's vanilla-y, right? It comes off sweet, but then the beer is actually not that sweet. And you get this bourbon character. And the chocolate and the roast and the espresso character. It's very disjointed of a beer. It's very boozy too. Like there's a, this is like this is hot bourbon thing, like um, honestly, it's very nutty too. Yeah, you get that hot bourbon nuttiness, um, uh, char and but that kind of like bourbon, kind of yeah, like I want to call it like nutty roasting. Yeah, like um, dried almonds and stuff like that. Wow, interesting. And then the echoing aftertaste of alcohol. It, it's strange because like somehow. Bourbon County, for me, comes off more drinkable, even though it's like four, like three, four points higher in ABV. Yeah, you know what? I guess it's sort of, I got to post a review. I got to post a review that I did. This is a long time ago to read this beer, but it makes sense that I didn't buy this beer again. Um, it's very thin. Uh, this is sort of a, I wouldn't even give it to a beginner. Because in the sense that, like, for Battle of Pure Stout, for a beginner, I would find, like, something like Bourbon County would be tastier because it really has more of this kind of thick and chew and sweetness to help balance out the beer. This, for a non-beer drinker, would be like, what is this? Like, 
you know, for, for someone getting introduced to style, you'd find so many sharp edges and, and, and the lack of uh, balance and the, the emptiness in the mid palette. Wow. So yeah, huh. uh, it's, it's, it's honestly almost like a different style. Um, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, like, how about this? Not to put down too much, too down, uh, like, put too much hate on something like Hazy Little Thing. It'd be like giving someone a Hazy Little Thing, which honestly is more drinkable, way more drinkable than this beer, and then giving them, like, an other half double IPA, right? It's like giving them, it's like having this beer versus a Burma County. They're, they're vastly different beers, despite the fact that they're, like, only a couple percentages of ABV away. They're quote unquote barrel and imperial styles. But this is, like, sweet, marshmallowy. But then it doesn't come off desserty like the way Bourbon County does, and it's very thin and lacks the the, the body and richness that comes with Barrel Energy Imperial Stout. It is so small on the palate for an eleven percent beer. That's very weird. And the crazy thing, if you do the math, I mean, we're talking about. Um, all right, so let's one point five times this, right? Because like twelve ounces to eighteen ounces, um, Bourbon County you get like seventeen ounces or sixty nine, whatever. If you do the math on that. This costs about four, about six dollars. I would say, yeah, retail about six dollars, right? Per, if if you want the size, the amount of Bourbon County, Bourbon County sells for about what, like eleven, twelve dollars. I would easily pay double for Bourbon County because it is, I would argue, definitely over two. I would say it's like three, between somewhere around like three or four times better than this beer, maybe five. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Like it, it's at least two times better than this beer. Um, 2x multiplier yeah. for sure. So, and this cost you're paying. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I did just talk a lot of smack about this beer, but it's still quite drinkable. Um, I have a high regard for the style too, so I'm being very picky. I mean, it's still tasty liquid. I mean, we're talking about comparing this beer to like Bourbon County, in my opinion, is like a 99 to 100 beer, right? It's good liquid. It's just disappointing because I, I hold this style to such a high, high standard because of Bourbon County. So, like, thanks for ruining it all. Thanks for ruining it for everybody, Bourbon County. 84. 84, that is Dragon's Milk. Still tastes great. No off flavors. Just doesn't do the job that I want. And uh, a B to A plus is a big difference. So, until next time, cheers later.